The BOPS lesson planning process, which is very popular in a face-to-face -face setting, can easily be transferred online. And the reason it transfers online is that it follows a very simple methodology that really lends itself to the online environment. The notion of a beginning, a middle, and an end, that bridge in, the focus on the learning outcome, the pre-testing, the participatory learning, the post-testing, and the summary all work in an online environment. And with tools like Zoom or other, other web-based conferencing tools that allow you to have breakout rooms or to allow uh, different aspects of collaboration, you can engage in all aspects of the BOPS model in an online environment. If you consider the power of video session that um, I did online, you'll notice that the BOPS model played a very significant role. Everything from the first slide to the introductory slide was all part of the bridge in perspective, and it, it was intended to capture the learner's attention. Um, it is was intended to bring them in to identify where we wanted them to go, but to really capture that attention. Considering our session and the first picture, this notion of a picture saying more than a thousand words, that is part of the bridge. Another part of the bridge was a setup for the breakout session where we asked the learners to talk about or identify a way to rapidly fold t-shirts and then teach others. It's really important that when you look at these bridging techniques, you can use things like telling a story, bringing in a relevant newspaper article, a website, a video, which is important, say an interesting statistic, create doubt. There's a variety of things that can be done. Identify a problem. Well, we focused on an opportunity. We presented a problem um, and, and had the students engage in that as a bridging inactivity. After the breakout session, the video explaining how effective it can be to fold a shirt in under two seconds was an eye-opener for a lot of students. Um, after that bridging activity, the students were hooked. And this is where the outcomes comes into play. And I had the opportunity to tell the learner where we're going. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use media resources like video and all this other good stuff to enhance the learning environment. So I explicitly stated the learning outcome. So that's the outcome part. The pre-assessment stage is really quite important. It gives you the opportunity to, to get a sense of where your learners are at. You can use a variety of open-ended questions, brainstorming. There's a variety of things that can be done, uh, but you really want to get a sense of where your learner is at and where you need to take them. And if you consider our example of looking at the search engines and you know the response was YouTube. It actually was YouTube for both of the uh, search engine questions. Um, and that was purposely designed to get people to think about videos, to think about YouTube. It also was intended to get the learner to start focusing on the participation aspect of this whole exchange. Yes, we broke the learners out when they're looking at the plan for you know, folding the t-shirts, but even as we're going along, participation I think is really important. So in the participation stage, you want to share information, but you also want to establish interaction between your students and, and yourself. One of the most important things is that you don't trap yourself in a talking is teaching perspective or the talk only lecture. So you want to continue to use media and video to actually provide opportunities for more participation and engagement. You can use interesting slides that uh, start to change the focus and draw uh, the learner in. Again, an aspect of bridging. Point to another video. Videos can be a wonderful source of questions. And a few seconds, I believe we spent about a minute in this video, and then we stopped the class and everybody had an opportunity to talk about his perspective. That if you um, were to design one of the worst environments for learning, it would be a modern day classroom because we, we have evolved to be in constant motion and looking everywhere around us, right? So this was an opportunity for us to engage one more time. As we moved through the presentation, we talked about more information. So we shifted away from just the pure video perspective, and we started talking about other media, how you can combine other media with your video to actually form a tutorial and provide a much deeper perspective and really help your learner. So this is really about engagement at a much more significant level. So a series of slides talked about the process, shared a story about this. My sons are professional racers, so they actually use this. This is part of what they do on a regular basis. Now, as we're going along, when you get to a point where 
you're, you have really conveyed all the information you need, this is when you start to get a sense of whether or not you got your learner to the point where they see how media can be used. So you start to assess your learner in, in terms of a post-assessment. And you want to look for muddiest point. You want to give people time to answer. And so again, a bit more of engagement. Here's some open-ended questions. What are the advantages of using media? How do media enhance learning? These are open-ended questions, and these can take some time. You have to be really careful that you don't ask yes or no type questions. They've got to be open ended and you have to at times give some time for people to answer. Now, if you've got a larger setting or if you're doing this online like we are, you can then have people go back into a breakout room. They can share their thoughts. You bring them back together and then they can share them again. Now, you've got to be careful that coming in and out of breakout rooms can take a little bit of time. So you have to find just that right balance. But the key here is, is to engage your learner to find out where they're at. The summary stage which is S on the BOPS model, is really about pulling the pieces together, ensuring that the outcome has been achieved and making that meaningful connection and helping the learner to recognize where they're at. Uh, it's important that you ask key questions uh, to help the learner you know, do the summary themselves. So it's you can help to summarize ideas, but it's really important that you help the learner to summarize through your questions and through your leading. So if you take a look at our example, you know, I identified some of the key things deeper, broader communication, it's mobile. But I had asked students to identify those key things. And as we're going along, I asked for more participation and asked for more feedback. So in summary, the BOPS model can be a wonderful tool. My question to you is how can you make the summary better? I would encourage you not to do a closed ended question like what does B stand for? What does O stand for? The idea of how you can make it better, I think, is a much better summary. So this is one tool that you can use to create a wonderful synchronous collaboration session and guide and direct your learners to making their own meaningful connections.